Hi, it's Tara here. I'm here with Anna Luno. And as you know, I'm wanting, doing a series of um, interviews called Secret Women's Biz because I feel like secret women's business is so secret that we don't even know it ourselves. Like it's become a secret from women. And I want to look at the best ways, you know, so many women are struggling, juggling their life. And so thank you so much for your time, Anna. What I want to find out from you, tell us a little bit um, about what you were doing in your life because it would be pretty exciting to some people and seem like to me I feel like you must be busier than I am even though I've got the six kids um, but what when you first got pregnant how was that and what was your expectations around tell us a little bit about your your life and how getting pregnant sort of you know affected what you were thinking was going to be the future or were you not sure how that was going to play out uh, just okay. Well, to start off with, my life for the last 10 years has been as a touring DJ. So I live in LA. I'm Australian, but I live in LA and I basically travel around America probably three weekends a month doing three shows in three different cities every week on average. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less. I also do a radio show um, here in LA every week, a two hour radio show on Apple Music. So um, that was what my life was. It was already busy, but it was on my own terms. And obviously I, you know, worked really hard when I needed to. And I, um, when I had a day off, I took a day off, you know, but as, as is the nature of working for yourself, you never switch off and you find work to do on those days off. So. Um, yeah, my life, I, I thought my life was very hectic and it was, um, yeah. um, but you know, having, I, I definitely wanted to have a, a child. I wanted to have a baby and I knew that, um, I knew that it was never going to be like the right time or whatever, but more than ever, I felt like I could have handled it now because I'm a little bit more established. I don't need to do quite as many shows if I don't want to. Mm. Um, so just because I can pay my rent with less shows than I used to be able to yeah. now that I'm a bit more established. Um, so that was a good thing. And, and, you know, I was ready for the challenge, but it was still a shock when I felt, when I actually felt pregnant and when the realization was like, Oh, okay. I've just basically gambled everything I know because I don't know what this is going to be like. And I, my general character is just because of the nature of my work where you never really know what's, what's ahead. Because that's the nature of my work. That's the way I think. So I never really look more than three months ahead at a time. And I sort of like squint my eyes and look into the future and be like, am I going to be able to do that? But, but I also know that there's no point worrying about too mm. much about what's six months, nine months ahead. Because That is a real key that a lot of people miss. But to not worry too far ahead, to have that sort of vision, but not let yourself be stuck in that. Yeah. yeah, not let fears of projected problems nine months down the road stop you from being now. And I like a lot of people gave a lot of um, crap to that Sheryl Sandberg book, the Lean In book. Yeah. But I read that when I was about 25 and I loved what she said about... Um, I loved what she said about um, not taking yourself out of the game till you're ready to take yourself out of the game. So if you think you're going to get pregnant, don't start backing off from work because you think, oh, well, I'll probably be pregnant in next year anyway. So I won't go for that promotion or I won't. And she says, just go full speed ahead until you can't do it anymore and then take yourself out of the race. And I think that that's really incredible advice because you just don't know can you even fall pregnant once you fall pregnant it might be easier than you think you might be able to do it once you have the baby maybe your baby is a great easy baby and you find it really easy to work as many, or maybe there's a way you can do it while also having the baby you know you don't you don't know how you're going to be so there's no point in cutting yourself off from opportunities before you have the baby um so yeah, that was sort of going through my head like, okay, I'm, I am concerned and I don't know what's ahead, but I also, you know, can stop this train when I need to. And if, and, and that's just, I, for now I feel good and I'm just going to take it one month at a time, one week at a time. And that's how I manage it on a macro level and also on a micro level. So, you know, each week I just focused on, okay, this week my goals are, I just need to get this and this done. And honestly, anything else is a bonus. Other than that, I can relax, you know, and I just sort of gave myself these little, these little um, goals to set. Um, Which like, is also about really prioritizing, isn't it? So you're saying, yeah. I, abs 
absolute two priorities this week. This, and that is actually, else, yeah. Everything else can go by the wayside. And I think we live in like a really tricky time because social media means that we're always seeing everybody's things they come at us all the time and that the problem with that is that sometimes it it think, makes you feel like bad for not doing something that was never your goal in the first place yeah. and I would see people like doing something and I'm like oh man that's so cool I want to be doing that and I'd, I'd be like oh, I'm gonna be feeling bad for not doing this thing which I never set out to do mm. or not being able to do and then I'm like wait your goal was not to do that your goal is this and this right now get those done. And then there will be a time where you can do that. But right now just focus on this and just really keeping your, giving yourself a little bit of tunnel vision, I think mm -hmm. is really good when you're stressed because it means that you can just narrow in. And that's also not taking on too much. Yes. Cause we can't. So, yeah. yeah really it is. It's been realistic. Productive on what you are focusing on. So that's moving ahead. Cause I see a lot of women trying to juggle too many balls. Yes. And it's, it's totally, even now, I mean, I say all this, but even now I've got the baby and um, she's doing great. She's six months old now. Uh, and I'm like every, you know, Oh, she yeah, each, yeah, I thought so, but it's actually my phone ringing. Um, okay. <laughs> each, um, you, can you wait, you can go and grab her if you want. I think I'll hear her. She, she usually wakes up. It's almost, it's 10 to three. She usually wakes up anywhere between three and three thirty. So, yeah, okay. um, yeah, so she, you know, each each week I'm like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I was fitter already. I thought by now I would have been like way fitter than I am and everything. And it's like, you know, you just got to, you got to know which things become. It's like, okay, if I want, that hasn't been my priority. My priority was to get these songs done and to get the video done and to get them out. Now I've gotten that done and now I can focus on getting fitter. So I signed up to a fitness class starting next month and I'm going to, you know, get to try and incorporate more in my day-to-day -day life to build up to start that fitness class. Yeah. So yeah, I just have to really, really um, just really bring it back to eat. And sometimes it comes down to half day by half day. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can see that I'm going to have to do this, 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 this by next week. Okay. Today it's all this tomorrow. It's all this. Cause you can't, if you've got every task that you have to do in your head at the same time, you can't do any of it. You have to be able to put it on paper and put it away so you can focus on one That's task. Right. And the irony of that is, because this is how I work as well, so the irony of that is after you do a couple of things, then everything's shifted around you. So half of that list might not be relevant anymore. True. You know? yes. So if, you're, if you've got this list that you're stuck on, you're trying to do it all and you're trying to keep it all in your head and you're... Uh, then actually once you've done a couple of things, so say you put your video out, you don't actually know exactly what's going to transpire after that. And then your to-do list actually shifts. Absolutely. And your yeah, priorities totally. now shift and you might be directed this way or that way or this might not be important anymore. Yes, exactly. And I think yeah. like for a lot of people that's a scary idea because idea you never really know what you're going to be doing every day and you have to be ready to adapt. Mm. But at the same time... Um, but if you can just be, if you can just keep yourself with your eye on the prize and have that discipline, then it's, you know, it might be scary at first, but just week by week, it, it you get to trust yourself and just know that, um, that, uh, that you're capable of more than you think, you know, like something that I always, um, I always say that like, sometimes when I'm at my absolute busiest, I surprise myself and actually it makes it easier to get a great result out of myself because I don't actually have time to second guess myself as much when I'm yeah. short on time. And to be it's distracted really... by other things. Exactly. You really, when you're on a time crunch, it makes you very clear about what you can and cannot do in that time frame and what's important, which I think is just motherhood in general. You don't have as much time yeah. to do your things. Like now, for yeah. instance, I write music as well and I found it quite a, often would find it really difficult to pin myself down and really commit to ideas and make moves on things and decide, you know, make final decisions. And now I don't have that luxury. I've got two hours while the baby's sleeping to get these vocals done. So I'm just going to be like, yep, that's good. Go with it. Yep. That's good. Go with it. Just like decisive time limitations are actually fantastic for mm -hmm. getting things done. Yeah. Limitations give you a guideline of like, okay, well done is better than perfect. If it's not done in two hours, it's not getting done. Yeah. So let's get it done. And it's actually, you shock yourself because you're like, oh, yeah. 
I actually did a great job of that. You know, that's, that's done and that's great. I mean, sometimes you don't, but <laughs> yeah. I would say 85% of the time you will definitely be able to do it. You know, it's the same as um, someone's coming over, quick clean up the house. Yeah, I get the house cleaned up so much better with so much more energy when I know that you know I've got half an hour or an hour. If I've got the whole day, yeah, you don't do it. You don't get distracted. You start sorting out the photo albums. Like you just go off in different tangents. It's exactly the same as that. And also, women in general, we you know we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we're capable of. And it's something I see a lot in my industry where like. And all industries where men are more likely to be like, yeah, I can do that. I can do it. Yep. Sure. And we go, Oh, can I really do that though? Because I've got this and I've got that and I've got that. And it's like, yes, that's a good, that's a good thought process to have. Mm. Um, however, you, you are more capable than you think. And you have to keep, you have to learn to trust yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that, do you think that comes from practice? Practicing trusting yourself, practicing, you know, there's that definite thing that you've brought up, which I've, Fine. A lot of women with a bit of anxiety and fear, that's one of the things they're, they're missing at the moment, which is is the having that faith how things are going to roll out and actually yeah. you're enjoying the adventure of that. Yeah, I mean, so really enjoying. intentional and focused and that um, having a bit of faith or, or I sort of almost see it like enjoying the ride to see what, yeah. what's going to come out of that and then make your next step. Absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, like doing anything in life, I always say that there's no good or bad in, in most things, because even when you fail, you still like when you fail, you still, there's always good things that come out of it. There's always an upside to every situation, whether you lose or you win in your eyes of what you yeah. think. So it's like, you start to like really the journey of doing whatever you're doing, that's the, that's the goal. Like if you can enjoy what you're doing every day, that's the goal. You know, wherever you're headed may or may not be what you want it to be when that you get there. So, and when you have that intention clear, then that becomes like a filter for the choices that you make. And absolutely. that makes your choice, that brings you to that point of being more decisive around your choices and saying yes and no to stuff. Yes. You know, agreed. I'm not going to come to coffee with that person because I really need to do this right now. And that's, you know, I can do that. I need to do that later, you know, and just getting a bit more decisive around that thing. But it does come to having that clear intention, that clear goal. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So what's your one, um, like, bit of advice to you to you know, your younger self, whether it was when you first had the baby or when you were pregnant or before that? Oh. Um. Nothing. You're happy no, with that? No, 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 no. I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I didn't have fears. It's not that I didn't yeah, have fears. Yeah. I'm, I absolutely, like... For me, I had a lot of things like I, I, I definitely had a lot of hard times in my pregnancy, but I don't know if they were more environmental than internal. Um, and I don't, and I think I had to go through them so I wouldn't tell myself not to experience them. Yeah. yeah. Um, Is that like the transition? Like, getting your like transitioning, like getting your head around how things are going to be and, and yeah. How. Yeah. And, and uh, just discovering my identity as a mother and as a, um, you know, like just working out how, how I was going to operate and how my business was going to operate as a working mother, DJ, musician, radio yeah, host. And how that probably no one really done that before you. So you didn't really have. Not many, you know, there's, there's one or two girls that I, yeah, women that I know. That's that finding mentorship as well, isn't it? So actually looking at other model, how people model their life and, and working out what's going to feel right for you. Yes, exactly. Um, but no, I think, I mean, I never, I wouldn't say that I ever, like, I definitely had dark moments where I was, you know, wondering how I was going to do it and if it like had anxious moments, but I wouldn't say that I was fixated on any one thing that I can tell myself was wrong. Mm -hmm. 
I think, you know, I had a bit of a, a, a sort of rough end of pregnancy. So, you know, the, just with a couple of complications mm-hmm. and that was a little bit scary. And, um, you know, I'd probably tell myself that it's going to be okay and that, you know, yeah. that it's going to be fine. Um, but that's probably about it. Sorry, that took way too long to answer that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Everyone's like, baby's waking up in two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get to the point, lady. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the baby's like slowly coming back into your arms right now. Yeah. Um, no, but what it sounds like to me is that your, um, your attitude that you took into it is what's carried you through. So you don't really have any regrets like, oh, God, I would have done this differently or I would have done that differently. It sounds like what you've done is um, roll with the punches, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did do that, yeah. I wasn't, yeah. yeah. Mm. And that's actually, what... do you know what though? I will say, I remember in the early tri- like in the first trimester, I definitely reached out to a, a woman that I know who who dances a lot, just because I was really nervous about physically doing what I do and, yeah. and how that would affect me and how that would affect the baby. I took the babies, obviously took it very seriously as all women do. You know, I was very, I was very concerned that um, what I was doing physically was going to you know, badly affect the baby in, in some way. And so uh, that's something that I really was um, anxious about and, and just tr- talked to people about, just tried to find, just tried to find like mentor, as you say, like someone who could, who's been there, who can give me their advice on, on and it. And was the advice was, just to listen to your body? <laughs> yeah, she was amazing. She said, you know, she said that I would be pleasantly surprised at how much, mm. about how, you know, how physical you can be when you're pregnant. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not supposed to lie down in bed. Well, most people aren't supposed to lie down in bed for nine, 10 months. You're supposed to be physical. And I found, especially in the early part of my pregnancy, that when I was sick with morning sickness, actually the physicality is what snapped me out of it. And dancing was like the best thing I could do. It really just helped me move out, like shake it, shake it all out. Yeah. So yeah. Mm, Yeah. No, that sounds good. Cause there is that thing of listening to your body. And as you said before, some women can, yeah, don't, you don't need to have expectations of it. Some women can just charge right through their pregnancy with a lot of energy, which also depends on the expectations you have on yourself, the support that you have and flexibility that you have around you. Yeah. And that's one thing that running your own gig has, but it comes back to your expectations. And I think what you've done and that enabled you to go right through your pregnancy like that is that, um, you weren't expect you didn't have expectations of what it was going to be like, and it no. is that rolling with the punches a little bit, like just um, letting it unfold and being okay with that. And that's one thing that a lot of women, you know, if you're used to a job where you tick the boxes and you get a lot of shit done, it is sometimes difficult to move into that other sort of energy of of um, just going day by day if you need to. Yeah. And, and people say I got a lot done in my pregnancy, but I can tell you that there was like so many afternoons that by four o'clock I was in bed watching Netflix for sure, you know, and people are always like, Oh my God, you never stopped working. And I was like, I, I definitely did a lot, but I definitely just put my feet up like every day. So much. that is interesting because that's a modern day thing as like a new version of an old problem, I guess, of social media. So those people have just seen you on like, Playing big festivals and like, like oh, 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 here I am, here I am, and not seeing the reality of the days feeling sick and the, those extra days that you actually have paced yourself and looked after yourself during that, during that time as well. Absolutely. And I think that there's like, like and I will say in, in the defence of people whose lives seem like they're doing everything and they're not, I am really torn on how much to post the crappy parts. Yeah. Of things. Because the other thing is, is that I, we all have our problems and we all have things that are hard about our lives. And I'm just like, not sure how much of that I want to be blasting on social media and who it helps. Yeah. Like, yeah. Obviously, I think every now and then a bedhead day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Every now and then a reality check for sure. Yeah. And like, I'm always really real about what I, what it is that's happened, yeah. but it's like, but as well being like, 
it, like there was a few times where I just couldn't help myself. And in the middle of the night, I'm tweeting like anyone who's complaining about touring has never been eight and a half months pregnant in the middle of summer with an itchy complex, like with a skin itch and da-da-da. like I'd have these like moments where I was like, I haven't slept in seven days. <laughs> like, and I'd tweet something and then I'd be like, who am I talking to? Like yeah, how, yeah. Many, how many other nine month old pregnant, how, how many nine months pregnant DJs are there reading that tweet who are like, Mm, same. Yeah. you know what I mean you have to be like okay I'm just doing that because I just want to vent okay cool yeah. like, that's not going to help anybody really but just like start that with hashtag vent and then people yeah they don't want to read vent they don't have to yeah, yeah. Exactly. that is a problem for women where in mothers groups and all that stuff where everyone's putting on their happy face not that you were putting on a happy face but like just yeah, just not Going focusing on the city a bit. <laughs> But I guess that's what this is about, you know, and this is going to go to the right audience. This is going to go yeah. to um, and that, and you That's know, so important. Your, yeah, if you look at your Instagram page and then watch this, then you see, you know, yes, there is all of that and, and this is how you did it. Um, yes, yeah. But what's behind that is going with the flow and what made it easier for you probably as well. Is, and that's what I do too, is the going with the flow, is the rolling with the punches, is the um, not having a fixed expectation of how everything's going to be and having a clear intention, staying focused on that because you, that's what I say to people, I don't have much time. So when I do have time, I get shit done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I've got to know what that shit is that I'm going to be doing. And I do find, I agree with you, when I have a whole day, I can get to the end of the day and think, oh, what the fuck did I do today? Like, yeah. I did lots, but I didn't do anything that I actually needed to. Yes. Um, so that, that um, yeah, all those little things come back to how you have done what you did do when, you're preg- when you were pregnant. Yeah, and just to be really okay. practical for people, mm. like I literally would be like, okay, here's my to-do list and it would be this long list. Okay, all th- here are all the things that need to be done within the next 48 hours, bang, 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 four things. Yeah. They could make a list of those four things, a new list. That's yeah. what's next to your computer. Yeah. Whenever you go to open your Facebook, whenever you try and go off in a different direction, you look at your list until those four things are crossed off your list. You're not going anywhere else. You're just getting those yeah. four things done. And yeah. then you get like, Oh, okay, cool. That's all for, I'm on target. Now I can like do that whatever or I can call my auntie or I can do you know you just make your priority list and just knock that out and you'll be surprised how actually the actual things that you really need to do in life can be done quite efficiently Mm. it's the fluff and it's the things that we don't necessarily need to do or the things that we would like or you know the conversations with whatever it is it's like just that stuff can all happen but the most essential things can be done into probably most people can get what they really need done in two to three hours a day. I swear to you. The rest of I it is just like, fin- Was it Finland that's cut the working day back to six hours? I believe it. And everyone believe getting it. the same amount of work done. So, yep, I believe that. Time, as mums, we're going to do our eight-hour day in an hour and a half. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know. Imagine like, I, Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got six. I can't even imagine. But even with one there are days when the nanny doesn't come in or whatever. And I still get my radio show done in a day and I still get it done, but it's just like a different day. <laughs> it's a little bit more like, uh, 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 <laughs> but it gets done. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely that the focus. Um, and we do have a lot of peripheral crap that we pay attention to that just sure. that we need to, um, you know, let go of for sure. Yeah. Agreed. All right, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. It's just nice to hear, as I said, I just want to hear people's stories and so we can start for other women, you know, they can, whether they've already got kids or pregnant or whatever, they can start getting that real information about how different women manage manage their life to, you know, and it's not, I don't see it as juggling it. It's like it becomes a lifestyle. It's the way you live. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's a, I completely agree with you. And I think it's really great that you're doing this and, and giving women the tools and giving them, you know, I'm part of a great Facebook group in America that's localized to my neighborhoods. Yeah. And you know, it's a lot of women just sharing information, you know, and that's having that around you is just key. Yeah. 
Yeah, you need it. Otherwise, you feel isolated and then you, you need that um, shared experience, don't you? Totally, yeah. And that also, those, that, that also is because everybody's got something valuable to share and contribute. And totally. sometimes you're going to be the contributor and sometimes you're going to be the receiver. And For sure. being completely okay with that flow between the two. Absolutely, with playing both roles and, yeah. and understanding the value in both roles. Yeah, exactly. 